Welcome to part 25 of this video series. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. In this video today, we're going to look at an annual checklist for your small liveaboard boat. And a special thank you to those who have already subscribed to this channel. And again, thank you so much for supporting the creation of this video series. If you haven't done so already, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos in this series. Okay. So I said this is an annual list, but lots of boaters will say it should be done at least twice a year. And I've heard some say it's okay if you do it once every second year. I admit personally there are some things on here that should be done more often than others. But I believe you should at least check all these things at least once a year. And if you want a printout of this list so you can use it to check your boat, I'll put a link to one that I created at the end of this video. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about stuff related to safety and security on your small liveaboard boat. The first thing I'm going to say is each area, state, country has their own laws on what mandatory safety equipment you need to have on board your boat. Check with your local authority what these are and whenever you do your safety checklist, double check that you have the mandatory equipment on board. Having said that, let's start with the safety equipment on your deck and in your cockpit. Number one, make sure your lifelines or rails are in good condition. Also that your stanchions or pulpit are securely mounted. Check that all your hardware is tight and sealed on the deck. And that your grab rails are secure and free from any corrosion or snags that may hit your hands. Make sure your non-skid surfaces are free from accumulated dirt or access wear. Okay, so now we're going to talk about fire extinguishers. Do you have all the required quantities and types of fire extinguishers? Again, this varies from one area to another, so check with your local laws to find out how many and of what type. Have you had them checked within the past year? Are serviceable units tagged by a licensed facility? Are units accessible? What I mean is, can you grab them quickly if there's a fire? Is at least one in the helm or cockpit? And make sure that your crew and family, whichever you're traveling with, know how to operate them. Next, we're going to talk about your marine stove. No matter what type of fuel it uses, make sure it's properly ventilated to remove carbon monoxide from the cabin. If you plan on cooking while underway, you should have retainers or rails for your pots and pans. If it is built in, then it should be properly insulated and free from any combustible materials, and this includes cooking fuel. Stove fuel should be stored in a separate compartment from the boat's interior and also from the engine room. If you're using propane or natural gas, make sure it's tightly secure and that the shutoff valve is at the tank. Also make sure you have proper labeling and cautions in place at the tank location. The compartment itself, it should be ventilated overboard below the level of the tank base. Now we're gonna go through anchors and ground tackle. You should have at least two anchors on board. If you're traveling, make sure you have anchors for the different types of bottom conditions you might come across. Also, you should have a stern anchor for those locations where swinging at anchor is not ideal. Make sure your road is of adequate length for your boat and the bottom conditions. And at the very least, you should have a length of chain at your anchor. Make sure your tackle is properly secured on the deck. Use a thimble on road and make sure your safety wire, any shackles, do not use quick links. Have some chafing gear on chocks for extended stays in one place or in storm conditions. And keep your main anchor stowed so you can really quickly access it. A couple more things to check as far as safety goes are make sure you have a life jacket for everybody on board and that it is an easily accessible location in case of an emergency. Check for any wear or abrasion, uh, weak or torn seams, things like that. If you're using an inflatable life jacket, check the inflation device and that the cartridges are secure and charged. For any enclosed or semi-enclosed area, Ensure that you have at least one properly installed or working carbon monoxide detector. Also, you should consider having an EPIRB for situations of distress. You want to make sure you can be found, especially if you go anywhere offshore. Lastly, as far as safety is concerned, you should check your bilge pumps. Check that your pumps will adequately remove enough water in case of an emergency. There's no such thing as too big or too many pumps. Do you have a manual backup? Are bilges clean and free to circulate? Make sure you clean your through hulls. Remember to check your bilges frequently and do not simply rely on automatic pumps. Okay, so speaking of through hulls, they're next on our list today. You gotta make sure your strainers, intakes, and exhaust or discharge fittings are free from any restrictions such as barnacles, marine growth, or just debris. 
Inspect your C-valves for smooth operation and that they don't stick. Also, make sure your C-valves are easily accessible and you have good handles on them for quick closing. Make sure your hoses are in good condition and free from any cracking. Anywhere you have hoses below the water line, you should use two hose clamps, just to be sure. If you're using a standard marine toilet, make sure you have an anti-siphon valve fitted on it. And lastly, tie or attach the through-hole plugs near any fitting or attached to a hose in case of emergency. Okay, next let's do a checklist for your boat's fuel system. Firstly, if you have a permanent tank, is the system properly grounded at the filter, tank, deck pumps, etc.? Is the fuel tank itself free from rust or contamination? Now, this one should be obvious. Make sure you have no leaks from the tank, hose, or fittings, and that you use approved hoses and check that they're free from cracking or stiffness, and that they have adequate slack to account for vibration. Make sure the tank itself is well secured. Have a fuel shutoff valve on both the tank and the engine. Make sure that your engine compartment itself is clean and free from anything like oily rags or flammable materials. If you have an inboard, always have your blower switch in a remote location. Okay, so that's it for your fuel system. Let's move on to your electrical system. Make sure your wiring is approved for marine applications. Always try to have your system neatly bundled and secured. Don't have your wires too short so that they have to strain and protect your wires against chafing. Make sure your wires are clear of the exhaust system and bilge. Always, always use circuit breakers or fuses to protect your system. And have all your connections sealed to prevent corrosion. If you're connecting wires, try to solder them first and then seal them with heat shrink tubing. This protects them from corrosion. Which again leads us into our next category, and that is corrosion prevention. Check often that your through hulls, props, shafts, bearings, rudder fittings, and any other exposed fastenings are free of destructive corrosion. Make sure you have enough zinc to provide protection. The weakest metal always corrodes first, and zinc is a very weak metal. Check that your through hulls are properly bonded to the hull so you don't get any leaks around the fittings. Inspect the steering cables, engine control linkage, engine mounts, and gear case for corrosion and that they're properly lubricated. Paint or seal exposed areas of hardware uh, to prevent any undue corrosion. So, our last category for our checklist is the batteries. Always store them in non-corrosive, liquid-tight, ventilated containers and place non-conductive covers over the posts. And lastly, make sure your batteries are well secured so they can't move around. Okay, so that's it for our checklist. And here's the link to the printable checklist if you want to print it out and use it to go cure your boat. Thank you. If I missed anything, or if you have any thoughts or ideas about this subject or ideas for future subjects that I have not covered, please let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love hearing from you. And thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video series on living aboard a small boat. If you have, then please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Also, I included links to all the past videos in the description below.